Hello, uh, I'm Pingye of the uh, Google AI Quantum team. And I'm going to talk about the statistical significance of the quantum supremacy experiment with the RST Comor processor. So a quick reminder on the statistical significance. So uh, it started with a null hypothesis H0 or H null, which means uh, there's nothing interesting. And uh, you have a statistics called F and, and also a probability distribution function of uh, F given H null. Then you go ahead and measure F in your data, let's say you come up with a value of H F hat, and the tail uh, probability uh, gives you the p-value. And uh, if p-value is uh, smaller than a predefined significance level alpha, then we say it is statistically significant, and we re reject H null. Okay. So that's how it is. And uh, for major uh, scientific claims, we usually set alpha to a so-called five sigma level for Gaussian, so which corresponds to this value. So the question is, which uh, new hypothesis are we talking about rejecting for a quantum supremacy? Okay. So before going to that, uh, I have a new hypothesis for my talk. So uh, hopefully you can help me reject it at the end. Okay. So the new hypothesis for the quantum supremacy, uh, the, the value f here is the fidelity of the sigma, sigma, sigma processor for a circuit. So uh, the first one is that f is consistent with zero. So then that means uh, the processor has lost quantum coherence. And the second one is that f is not zero, but it's low enough, so the classical simulation is easy. So that means no supremacy. Okay. So we want to reject both of these uh, no quantum or, and no uh, supremacy. Uh, hypothesis. And what we do is, of course, we follow this uh, p-value thing. And uh, here, uh, it's apparently, uh, if you can reject the second one, the se first one is rejected. So we set our uh, h null to be the second one. And we set this uh, threshold uh, to be 0.1%, which is, comes from a complexity analysis of classical simulations. So uh, which, at which uh, value the simulation should be already hard enough. Okay. And we want to reject it. That means we are significantly above it. Okay. All right. So the TLDR is that uh, with 53 qubits, 20 cycles of circuit, and 3 million samples per circuit with 10 different random circuits, we come up with an f hat of this value, okay, which corresponds to a p value of uh, about 6.4 sigma in Gaussian. Okay. So that, of course, is above 5 sigma, so that's good. And uh, of course, there's a systematic uncertainty on the value of a hat. Okay? So there's an uncertainty here. So we estimated the uncertainty to be 4 times 10 to the minus 5. And the uh, p-value with that uh, distribution here with, of f hat is estimated to be 2 times 10 to the minus 10, which corresponds to about 6.2 sigma in Gaussian. So again, both new hypotheses are rejected. Okay? So if you are interested in knowing how we come up with those numbers and this function, let's continue. So there are a few factors in coming up with, uh, in getting this uh, p-value. First is the distribution function of the h null. The second is uh, the estimation of the f hat. And the third is the distribution around f hat. Okay, so let's try to get those. First of all, the data set I used to, for analysis can be downloaded here, bit.ly slash quantum supremacy data set. Okay. So the Google's quantum supremacy experiment is based on the quantum circuit sampling. So this is an illustration of a uh, random circuit. And at the end of the circuit, we come up with a, a wave function, psi, uh, which is a linear combination of, uh, of course, two to the n different computational basis states. So you sample those uh, bit strings from this end state many times. And uh, the probability of sampling a particular bit string is uh, basically just amplitude squared. OK, that's standard quantum mechanics. And for random circuit, those uh, probabilities actually follow a distribution, uh, so-called uh, Porter-Thomas distribution. And here I'm using a variable called scaled probability, which is uh, the dimension of Hilbert space times the probability itself. 
uh, then the distribution becomes a very simple. It's an exponential distribution, which is independent of the number of qubits. Okay, it's easier to analyze. All right. So now we do sampling. So typically we sample about millions of bit strings for each random circuit. And for 53 qubits, that's of course much, much smaller than the Hilbert space. So it's a tiny sampling. Okay. And if we, uh, there are two different sampling uh, strategies that we are interested in. The first one is a uniform random sampling. That means each qubit gives you the zero or one in a 50%, 50% chance. Okay. And then the bit string you sampled and the x value, I mean the scale probability value you, you get, uh, will be distributed according to the population distribution, so which is the Porter Thomas itself. Okay. And this is what a decoherent quantum computer will give you. And if it is a perfect quantum computer, then the bit strings with higher probability will be sampled more often. So the distribution becomes x times exponential. Okay. So I call these two distributions P1 and P2. And it so happens, they look like this, and the average value of P1 is 1, P of P2 is 2. Okay. And this comes in very handy when we want to estimate fidelity. So we have an error model, which is a linear combination of the perfect uh, density matrix and a totally uh, random uh, matrix. So uh, the corresponding distribution of the uh, scale probability goes like this. Also, it's a, also a linear com uh, combination of the two distributions. And if we want to measure, or you can calculate a mean value out of this distribution, you can find out it's actually just very simple. It's an f plus 1. So that means the, the mean value of the measured x is a good is a fidelity estimator, okay. And this is the, our uh, so-called linear cross entropy fidelity formula, okay. And then now we want to see whether how this x distribution looks like. So we took data from a ELIDI circuit with uh, 53 qubits, 20 cycles, and three million measurements. Here, ELIDI circuit means uh, we remove 22 qub uh, two qubit gates out of this circuit uh, to make the computation in classical computers possible. Okay. And we estimate the fidelity to be that value, 0.18%. Okay. The next is we want to see whether that distribution uh, looks like uh, what we predicted with the theory. So we overlay that. Okay. Just by eyeballing it, it looks similar. We want to quanti quantitatively measure how, how similar they are with each other. So we use the Komogorov uh, Smirnov test. So it will give you a p-value of uh, the kind of, you can interpret as a probability that the data is drawn from this distribution function. So a p-value close to one, in this instance 0 0.98 means that it's very, cl very close. We have high confidence that this is from that distribution. And if we change the theoretical distribution from the estimate fidelity to, uh, for example, zero fidelity, the p-value goes down to very low. Okay, so we have confidence here that uh, the model uh, PDF is actually a very good distribution of, uh, description of the data. Okay, all right. And the next is we can try, to, we want to estimate the statistical uncertainty on the fidel uh, estimated fidelity. And because it is, error on, error, uh, it is a mean, so it, error on mean is kind of the standard way to do that. So from data, we estimate to be this value. And from the theoretical PDF, uh, PDF you can also estimate and you find out that there's an excellent agreement between the two. So that means uh, the theoretical uh, prediction can be used actually for our new hypothesis uh, distribution. Okay. And furthermore, we verify the statistical uncertainty by bootstrapping. And because uh, we have this uh, central limit theorem that uh, the distribution of the mean value should go with the Gaussian when, you have, uh, when the number of samples goes to infinity, so we uh, perform uh, 10,000 bootstraps. Each bootstrap sample contains 3 million uh, samples. And the mean value or the fidelity from each bootstrap sample is plotted he here. And this is the histogram of them. So it uh, indeed looks like a very good fit to Gaussian. Okay? And the width, uh, the standard deviation, is very close to the estimated one. So here we know that, OK, the new, uh, the new hypothesis PDF is a Gaussian. Okay, with our uh, theoretical, I mean, this uh, threshold fidelity of 0.1% and uh, standard deviation of theoretical prediction. Okay. All right, 
Now we have more than one random circuit. We have ten of them, so we can com we, we can combine them. And there are like we use two different ways of com combining them, and we get uh, basically identical results. Okay. And with a combined sample, we can again test the uh, the the agreement between theory and, and uh, data, and uh, we can see that with this combined sample, there are thirty million samples. So uh, the p-value is still reasonable, 66%. But if you say, uh, what's the p-value for a uh, threshold fidelity, it becomes very, very low. And for zero fidelity, it's even lower. So this gives us more confidence that the combination uh, process uh, makes sense. All right. So the next is we need to go into supremacy region, where uh, the classical computation of those uh, probabilities is not possible. So uh, we want, but, but nonetheless, we need to estimate the significance of a full circuit. So we go to a lower number of qubits from 12 qubits to 38 qubits and check the ratio between a full circuit and the elided circuit in a similar way of the elided circuit in 53 qubits. And we found out that ratio of these two fidelities is about 97%. So that is a factor we apply to the combined fidelity to four our estimate of the full circuit fidelity, which is this value. Okay. And then the next is the systematic uncertainty. So uh, there are many, many uh, sources of uncertainty here, and they are captured in one big number, which is the drift. So how fidelity drifts with time after calibration. Okay. And uh, here we took data for 17 hours on the same random circuit. Uh, and we found out it drops down, not too much, but kind of visibly. Uh, within this range, I think uh, the linear fit seems to be working OK. So we use a linear fit. And we mod, uh, and the uh, supremacy experiment uh, is, the data of supremacy experiment is taken in the first hour. So we use the variation of the residual in the first hour plus the variation of the intersection to intersect to as a variance of the fidelity itself, and we treat that as a systematic uncertainty. Okay, and we take that ratio and multiply the ratio to the estimated uh, fidelity to be the final estimate of the systematic uncertainty. Okay, so we get that number. So now, coming back to this factor, all the four factors for coming up with, for calculating the p-value, we have all of them estimated. So it's uh, straightforward to plug them in to get the p-value. So for this tail probability of f hat, we get a p-value of this number, which corresponds to about 6.4 sigma in Gaussian. Okay. But then, this is one f hat. We do have a systematic, uh, systematic uncertainty here. So how do we deal with that? So the way we deal with it is that, okay, we can try, for example, we subtract by five sigma and see what's the p-value here. Of course, it's p-value is higher because you're integrating with more area. But then, uh, there are infinite number of possible choices of this, the value for, uh, for checking the p-value. So how do we do that? Uh, so uh, we, we found out that actually we can do an expectation, expectation value of p-value by integrating the p-value with this uh, Gaussian distribution around the f-hat. Okay. And after we do that, we get a p-value of 2 times 10 to the t minus 10, and which corresponds to about 6.2 sigma in Gaussian. So that's our final. Uh, p-value for the whole quantum supremacy experiment. Okay. So conclusion, both null hypotheses are rejected uh, with more than five sigma of statistical significance. And uh, along the way, I've done several checks that give us some confidence on those numbers. And uh, the data set is available here. Okay. And coming back to the null hypothesis of my talk. So please help me reject this hypothesis by leaving comments below. Thank you very much. Thank you.